Welcome to the Copper King Minor Railroad. Today we're going to talk about the bridges of Car Fork and we're going to start working on the layout, so stay tuned. The bridges of Car Fork, there was nothing like it in the world. So many high mountain viaducts so close together in one spot. It could pass for a model railroad. So it was a must on my Copper King Mine and Railroad. In my version, I took a lot of creative license. There was no river, just a small stream. Houses and buildings filled the canyon and hillsides. Underground mines like Heinelboy and Apex were still actively working. I wish I had more room to do it justice. Thanks to Don Strack, and Larry Sachs for saving these images and keeping this memory alive. So let's look at the bridges. The first one was the Carfort Bridge or A-Line Bridge. The bridges were named letters after the levels they served. A level was the bottom of the mountain. There was no pit yet, and so up the mountainside ran A, B, C, D levels, etc. This is where the Bingham and Garfield Railroad came into the mine. It came in over the town of Bingham. Now this bridge was 190 feet high. Let's take another look at it. This is a little closer shot. You can see how it came up over the town. Here's an early picture of it. It's kind of neat. It was built around 1910 for that line. Now this is this is a really neat picture. Now look up here closer. You see all the bridges running up the canyon in this such a tight proximity. Now this left motor to the right. That would be servicing the apex mine was on the other side. Here's another look looking down at the canyon at it. So it's quite the bridge. This is an interesting shot. You have the, the old uh, steam engine from the B&G and the electric motors came from the pit. They started around the, in the late 20s, maybe around 1927, converted to electricity. The shovels converted to electricity in earlier 20s, in like 1923 or so. So that's kind of a neat picture. Then another picture of the steel work and then looking up now the next bridge we go to is the d-line bridge now this is way neat this is the only straight bridge it was in the canyon now look at this this was half wood and half steel so that was really unique then we move up to the g-line bridge as you can see it's an all wood st structure it's a couple of pictures of it. This is looking down on it. Now this is kind of interesting. So as the mine expanded, they had to make it come in straight. So they straightened it out. It was on the curb, but then they straightened out that one end that went into the mine. About, it says the dates on there, about 1954. Then up the canyon is uh, the H and I bridge. They were built about the same time. This is the eye bridge. Another picture of the eye bridge. Now this is interesting. This is uh, this picture was taken by Amzel Adams for the Fortune magazine, and so he usually takes a lot of nature shots and everything. So it's unusual to see this big industrial mine shot by him. But that was taken by Amzel Adams, so that was it's really neat. Then we go to the next bridge. It was J Bridge. Now look at this. This one's going right through the roof of the Highland Boy Mine. Here's another shot of it going through the roof right there. So I thought that was really unique. Another picture overhead of it going through that roof of the mine. Here, here's a picture of it um, when it was when the mine was taken down. A later picture, and you see it's just a short bridge. Still really cool. Then the last one was the L Bridge. Here's another view looking up the canyon. There's G and H, 
I, J, and L bridges. It's a really cool picture. In the last picture, you can just really lose yourself in this picture and looking up the canyon and what it would be like to live there at this time around all this mining and stuff. It's really cool. You can see the, the cement slab right there, so then I put the pot plywood from the forms on top and I cut it out in these big gentle curves. Now this worked out really neat because the inside the curve would be a canyon and the outside of the curve would be a mountain. So then it's offset from each side of the room to give you more room as you walk down the room. So that was a good idea. The, the little stand at the end was trying to give myself an idea how high the levels were. <laughs> Bingham's levels were 50 feet. There's no way I could do that with, to scale. So when I talked about the Copper King loading station right here, the Silver King one in Park City. I built before the even layout began. That's it right there. Uh, some more pictures of the plywood down. It was three and a quarter inch plywood, so it was really heavy. And so then the support work for all the railroads was really strong. I had to make it really strong so it could support my weight. Because all the top levels, I had to get up on the bottom levels to reach all the high mountains and everything so here's the here's the layout with the where the track work is going to be here's a canyon right here going in you see it's just really a strong support system underneath that here's the air levels of the mined area how it's going to go down. Here's another picture of the one of the side areas. See the 2 by 4s on the wall, and then that's where the mountains are going to be. It kind of gives me an idea where the mountains are going to be and how high they're going to be. Something to hook to when I start putting the plywood up for the mountains. So everything was screwed and screwed and glued and on there tied. Here's the Carfort Canyon. It has a little route running up the side, going off into a distance to nowhere, and then wrapped around the corner so you don't see where that goes. This goes into the other room. That's my mom. Anyway, so you get a general idea. I kept the grades uh, percents on those as low as I could so I could pull anything on it. Just a lot of pictures of that. The camera wasn't very good. I think some of them was my mom's camera. Yeah, this is my grandson right here. He's helping put some cork down. I had to get the track work up and ready before I even started any of the scenery. I got it all ready, made sure it was everything was running really well, and then I covered all the track up and started the scenery. So this is a diagram of my track plan. It's just basically two continuous loops and two point to points. But then everything is tied together so you can access all the levels, all the point to points, everything's tied together. And then there is uh, two rail yards, one over the mill area and one over in the city area. So that's my track plan.